NATO's Operation Gladio has moved into Ukraine, according to U.S. intelligence reports. Coming up. The openly Nazi base of Kiev's new army. WikiLeaks cables by the U.S. ambassador. And the, quote, psychopaths of CIA special ops. proved once again that the United States of America is and will remain the greatest force for freedom the world has ever known. Obama hits a new high this month claiming the U.S. were the main liberators against the Nazis. NSNBC reports that in reality World War II never ended, while publicly the White House demanded, quote, full denazification to charge those responsible for the Holocaust. Privately, even as the war against fascism was still raging, the White House was creating what it called rat lines to America for tens of thousands of Nazis, despite being classed as a menace to US security. You are the man responsible for hiring. Bob. Yes, yes. The White House created new identities for Nazi mass murderers like Klaus Barbie and deleted the records of their crimes, such as waterboarding. The torture chamber had manacles with the spikes facing in, dangling chains, weird harnesses. Soon Klaus Barbie arrived. They held my nose, choked me with water. I thought my lungs would burst. Then came the questions. When Barbie pulled the chain, I went all the way under. He'd hang up his big watch to keep it dry. This lasted two hours. Then Barbie said, since you won't talk, we'll get your husband and son. He tortured my 16-year-old. My husband and son never returned. Known as the Butcher of Leon, Barbie was accused of executing 4,000 and shipping 7,000 Jews to concentration camps. The U.S. first hired him directly, then sent him to create the Fiancés of Death, hit squads that taught torture to military hunters. Herman Becker Freising, Siegfried Ruff, Comrade Schaefer and Kurt Blome were all charged with gruesome experiments on Jews at concentration camps. All were admitted to the United States. It's just some of an estimated 30,000 Nazi war criminals brought to America. Many more were activated in Europe. Decades of bombings that have kept Europe in a state of terror are actually the work of Nazis recruited by the White House, top-level officials in government and the CIA confirmed. Former CIA head Bill Colby calls Gladio, as the campaign is codenamed, a, quote, major operation. Attacks like the Taksim Square massacre in Istanbul, where snipers from a hotel shot into the crowds, Former Prime Minister Bulent Echevitz notes it was a Gladio operation backed by the U.S. The world's leading scholar on Operation Gladio is Dr. Daniel Ganser. He joins us. Great to see you. What do you make of what's happened in Ukraine? Snipers shooting um, both uh, demonstrators and policemen in Maiden. And, it, it, you know, it, it reminded me of Istanbul on the 1st of May. You had um, uh, secret armies linked uh, to NATO firing uh, on, on people there on the square. And this then created chaos. And then you had um, a right wing military coup. It all reminds me of strategy of tension. And, and it means that you create chaos and emotional distress in a population. When you do structure, the, the political structure falls apart. Today, we really must try to understand the strategy of tension because otherwise we don't understand certain political events which are ongoing. This is President George H.W. Bush greeting Ukraine war criminal Yaroslav Stesko. Stesko personally oversaw report Salon, the murder of 7,000 Jews. In 1941, he marched into Kiev with the SS and issued a proclamation praising, quote, glory to the German leader Adolf Hitler. President Reagan brought Stesko to the White House and told him, your struggle is our struggle. Your dream is our dream. Stetsko led the Ukraine Nazi group OUMB that formed the infamous Nachtigall Battalion. His group went from town to town liquidating entire Jewish, Polish as well as Ukrainian populations, in total murdering some half a million. Stetsko's notorious head of secret police, Mikola Lebed, writes the book Hitler's Shadow, was convicted of murdering Poland's interior minister. The group's publications called for ethnogenetically pure Ukrainian territory, in other words, quote, purging Poles and Jews. 
CIA Deputy Alan Dulles wrote this letter to the Immigration Commissioner demanding to assure Mikola Lebed's re-entry into the United States without investigation, which would attract undue attention to his activities. Foreign Policy in Focus notes Lebed and Stetsko were just two of around 10,000 East European Nazi accomplices brought to the US. CIA documents reveal paying massive salaries to Nazi war criminals such as Lebed and called them Ukraine's government in exile, waiting for the right time. These groups' time has arrived. Organizations like Lebed's OUMB have merged under the party today called Svoboda. Ukrainian national politicians now flock to these Svoboda ceremonies with soldiers in Nazi uniforms honoring SS war criminals. Elected Svoboda officials renamed a Western Ukrainian street from Peace to Nachtigal, the battalion that massacred Jews in Ukraine and Belarus. Svoboda is led by Mr. Tagnibok. The Simon Wiesenthal Center in 2012 named him one of the world's five worst anti-Semites who calls for, quote, purging Ukraine of its last 400,000 Jews. Tagnibok's endorsed by John McCain and Assistant Secretary of State Vic Newland, who in a leaked conversation was caught nominating Ukraine's post-coup leaders. Her reward for Svoboda's violence in the coup d'etat was six cabinet posts first Nazis in government since the Third Reich. Professor Barry Litucci, Vice President of New York's Holocaust Memorial Committee, points out Newland is of Jewish descent. When asked why she helps one of the world's most appalling anti-Semites, Litucci replied, that's a question for a psychiatrist. To mask psychotic behavior, mainstream media have received perhaps their toughest White House assignment to date to convince the public there are no neo-Nazis in Ukraine. It comes as the country's fascists now go, quote, door to door in eastern Ukraine. If anyone is in, they are beaten or shot. The Holocaust Memorial Museum reports right after coming to power, Gestapo agents went from door to door. They arrested those who had spoken out against the Nazi party. Some were murdered. Also, Stephen Lemon brought together leading experts in new book Flashpoint in Ukraine to explain some of the horrors taking place in the country. Dr. Lemon joins us. Great to speak to you. How bad has the actual situation become? The rabbis preparing a case something very serious breaks out, the idea of a possible pogrom against Jews. And one of the rabbis said, we have 70, one, in one community, he said, we have 70 buses fueled and ready to go. The neo-Nazis, which is what they are in Ukraine today, are literally descendants of the Nazis of the earlier era. One of the leaders, Dmitro Yarosh, a cold-blooded killer, I've quoted him saying publicly, and he boasted about wanting to kill Jews till he dies. I'm Jewish. If I was in Ukraine, and what I know about Nazi history, I wouldn't wait around for a bus to take me up. I'd be getting out right away. Fascists most global research news have become the military enforcers for the new Ukraine government. The U.S. has financed a new Ukraine National Guard, reports also Michael Chosodovsky, called the Azov Battalion. Its emblem is a combination of the Nazi Black Sun and the SS division Das Reich. London's Sunday Times found the battalion is responsible for bloodshed against civilians that has caused revulsion amongst the population. NATO has begun Gladio false flag operations in Ukraine, according to U.S. intelligence sources quoted by author William Engdahl. The operation is led by right-wing extremist UNA, politically part of Right Sector, one of Ukraine's big two ultra-nationalist coalitions, but which has kept its military arm free. Global Research reports the UNA provided the snipers who deliberately shot both their own supporters and the police to provoke violence during the protests in Kiev. Wikileaks cables from the U.S. Embassy in Kiev show the UNA fights in wars from Chechnya to Georgia. Engdahl points out always on the U.S. side. The UNA behaves not like Ukraine nationalists, knows 21st century wire, but as international paramilitaries for the U.S. for so-called dirty wars when terrorism is required against civilians.
William Engdahl joins us. Really great to have you on. What do we know about special operations in Ukraine described to you as Gladio? The Ukrainian National Assembly that you mentioned is, is historically linked to Ukrainian Nazis, not neo-Nazis, but Nazis during the Second World War. They were smuggled into North America, Canada, and the U.S. by the thousands after the war in the United States. Today, they're, they're extremely powerful in Washington, influenced uh, by one estimate over, over half of the U.S. Senate are, are beholden to support from these uh, extreme right-wing Ukrainian uh, exiles. Neo-Nazi is really, a, a, I think, a very unuseful term because uh, it implies that it's not really real, that they're just uh, kind of doing... Uh, make-believe fantasy plays of, of Hitler uh, salutes and so forth. These are genuine, if you want to use the term Nazi as, as a descriptive term, these are genuine Nazis. The, uh, the UNA and uh, its, param its military arm have been used, they, they've uh, been trained by NATO to commit atrocities and then have that blamed on the Russian, Russians by the local populations in Chechnya and, and elsewhere. They've been used, they were used in the Georgia war with Russia in 2008. Yeah, what do you make of the consistent U.S. use of the very worst extremists now also in Ukraine? Uh, it's a war, if you will, against humanity. The people at the CIA, and I've met a few of these characters over the years, but the higher levels of the CIA, they come from Harvard, they come from Yale, they come from Princeton, from the old families, and that's kind of their private domain as they see it. George Herbert Walker Bush, Skull and Bones, Yale University, uh, James Lilly, Skull and Bones, Yale University, CIA ambassador to Beijing during Tiananmen Square where he, uh, by likely accounts, orchestrated the Tiananmen uprising against the government. They think they're very intelligent people, but in reality, they're extremely stupid people. And I want to make a point about this for listeners. Why do I say stupid? They're not uneducated. They have degrees, as I say, from the so-called elite universities. They're stupid in a human sense that they think that they can kill people in Odessa as an op, as an operation. They call it ops. So well, this is extremely stupid in the long run because they block out the interconnectedness of everything in the, in the world, really. They're incapable mentally because of their literally psychopathic personalities where they have been trained and, and uh, uh, developed to block out any human emotions. They, they, they are incapable of seeing these connections. So what's being done in Ukraine is going to have consequences for them, for their uh, next of kin, for their uh, friends, their ambiance and so forth uh, of a very negative sort. What goes around comes around. The U.S. created Al-Qaeda. Rand Corporation knows that terror network still expanding and will now take decades to stop. American-backed jihadis from Syria are now committing atrocities against the West, the latest, the shooting of three at a Jewish museum. U.S. quote, harvesting of unreconstructed fascists may be a dangerous game to play. Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.